All right, guys, in this video, we're going to talk about why you should learn the back end, even though you want to focus on the front end, and why you should learn the front end, even though you want to focus on the back end. Okay, let's get into it. You want me to lock it down, but I told her to pass the key. You got to slow it down, girl, you moving too fast for me. Nobody did it like this, so they wonder, they asking me. If I can slow it down, because it's coming too fast for me. I came up from the bottom, now look at me now, they mad at me. Can I slow it down because it's coming too fast for me? All right, guys. So basically, I got the idea of creating this video because somebody actually asked me this. You know, this is Lil Saf. Shout out to Lil Saf. Never seen his comments before. So that means he's a new uh, viewer. So shout out to him. He says, the question is, if you want to do front end, why do back end stuff? Quote unquote, or parentheses, PHP. Why, Joe? And we're going to get into it, guys. All right. All right. So let's start with the front end. What exactly is the front end? It's HTML, CSS, JavaScript. That's it. Okay. HTML is the way how you laid out your elements for your page, your document. CSS is how you give it the colors, how you give it the sizes of the images, how you style things up to align it a certain way. Uh, even to change the fonts, fonts, colors, etc. Right. Then we have JavaScript, which is the interactivity. For example, if I click in here, it automatically shows me, uh, some other cities that I can choose. Uh, this is being done with autocomplete, right? Like I could come here and put in something like, let's say for example, uh, CA and then I could start putting in like that and automatically it starts loading up. The different areas like California, Maryland, California City, California State, California, was it MO, Missouri, I think. I don't even know. Mississippi, I don't even know what's that. <laughs> don't mind me, guys. I'm just bugging. All right. But look, now in the back end, what is the back end really responsible for? Right. The back end is responsible for uh, making sure that, you know, there's logic for what happens when you land on Zillow.com. When we go to Zillow.com, does this page load up or do we have a home page load up right uh when we go to rent right what loads up the the rent page or does it uh show the home loans page right so the logic of the website is really being run by the back end okay it could be using some type of framework like php laravel or it could be using ruby on rails or python django or it could be using c sharp.net there's a million ways of doing the same thing okay uh, at the same time in the back end basically you also control how the data gets saved into a database and all of that information you know, gets put together in, in a special way and a special order. Right now, of course, I'm just going like doing like a little quick overview of this thing for anybody that's watching. But let's say, for example, somebody wants to register to this website to be able to save the listings that they are interested in. Right. So first of all, they got to be able to register. Right. So there needs to be some type of way to authenticate that that's the user so in the database the user's username or their email right their information gets saved right with their password and all of that information is in there now when they come back in they are able to sign in okay put in their information in here and then from there there's also another table or another collection where basically it has uh the information of which properties this person has liked Okay. So when they click on the heart, then from there that gets sent to the database in, in the back end. Okay. So that's technically what the back end does. Now, if you are a front end developer, you can go ahead and build all of this here, right? In the front end, how the website looks. But without a back end, there is no functionality. Okay. Without a server, without a database, all you're doing is creating an application that is stateless meaning that changes that you are making won't be safe won't be tracked meaning if i do some changes here on this browser and then i go in and I say hey i like this property here i want to save it to my likes right and i say i like it i can go on my phone and see all of the same listings that i liked because 
there's no way to connect it okay it's stateless all right um now of course to not make it too complicated there's situations where some front-end developers they say i don't want to learn the back end hey i don't want to deal with this i don't want to set up no servers and i'll use something like firebase okay that's fine you could do that but the reality of things is that if you really want to create an application like this and you want to have full control of it you're going to have to build the back end okay because in the front end you can do um pretty much anything as far as like keeping the state and and yes you could use local storage yes you could use cookies but it's not persisting right it's not persisting a user cannot come in and say hey i saved this in here in local storage and then i'm trying to go to my phone and try to see the same listings you can't it's impossible all right now one thing that i will say is uh for anybody that is focusing on the back end is that without the front end you won't be able to do any of these things that you are seeing right now like as far as like google uh google maps right being able to automatically update uh the listings as you move the the browser or move the the navigation on google maps you wouldn't be able to do this in in, in the back end okay and for it to be in real time like with the back end you will have to go in and generate a map and every time that you move this the page will have to reload okay that's how it works with the back end Okay, and you will have to generate all of this assets and <laughs> like that will be a nightmare. Okay. So technically, if you are a front end developer, you need the back end. Okay. Both the back end and the front end are basically like married to each other, are two partners. If those two partners don't understand how to communicate with each other, then the application is gonna be a mess. Okay, I've seen this done plenty of times of guys who are only back-end guys right and you say hey could you send me uh, uh set up an endpoint for me to get you know the listings on this page right and all you really need from that endpoint is a json file that is an array right uh and basically has different objects inside of it right and it has the date that it has an open house it has the price of the listing it has uh the bedrooms the bathrooms the square footage the address and then is it a new construction that's all you need for this component to work and i've been in situations where the guys who are just backing guys will go in and send you a full freaking data set of that listing meaning you're talking about who created it what time it was created um <laughs> freaking uh you know the overview the description the super details right that about this description or this this listing itself and you're like wait bro like all i needed was like five properties inside of this json object right so as a good back-end developer what you want to do is you want to serve the front end guy exactly what he needs but if you don't understand how the front end works or what's going on in the front end how can you serve that purpose that you are there for you get what i'm saying you can't really serve it properly I'll give you another perfect example football what here in the u.s they call soccer right they want to be bougie with it okay but it's football <laughs> so imagine this there's a big team right but nobody knows what position they're in right and they don't understand how the game works okay one guy that's supposed to be in the defense right he's going to the offense side right the guys that are playing offense they're going to the defense side right they don't understand how the defense works so they're just walking through thinking like hey the guys that are defending me you know they're not gonna do anything to me they, they're just gonna let me shoot the ball it's like nah bro it's like if you don't understand how the defense work right how can you be a good offense player and how can you be a good defense player if you don't understand how the offense works you get what i'm saying like you need each other like you need to understand both sides to really be good at whatever it is that you decide to do now again going back to the comment the question is if you want to do front end why do back end stuff if you want to do the front end you could do the front end but you need to understand what's happening in the back end 
so you could really do your job properly. I'll give you an example. When I first started learning how to code, I focused strictly on the front end. A hundred percent. I didn't even know what was going on in the back end. I thought that uh, the back end was like, hey, you submit a, a, a form. I never even knew for probably my first six, seven months of what happens when you submit that form, right? Like I strictly focus on the front end. I was like, hey, I'm creating HTML, CSS. I could create any design that you want me to create. But hey, I'll submit the form and that's it. I'll create the form and the form gets submitted. Whatever happens from there, that's for the next guy to to worry about. Okay. And the truth is that once I started working at companies that were like, yo, you got to know how to do this. You got to set up your your actual forms a certain way your actions need to be named a certain way to a certain route your you know the names of every input field needs to be in a certain structure so we could get access to that in the back end and be able to use this right now i'm telling you out of experience it's like it's super important to know both and it's the same thing again like i said i've worked with guys that are back end guys and don't understand the front end and they're literally like you know, it's like a, a guy with a bow and chain on, on their leg. They're dead weight on the team. Okay. They're literally dead weight. They could be like the best engineers and this, this and that. But at the end of the day, they make the projects take longer and they're not helpful for the front end guys. Cause now you as a front end guy, you have to explain to them saying, Hey, I only need this data like this. I only need this information. One of the main reasons why GraphQL is so popular and, and a lot of people have been saying like, Hey, this, this is a great thing, GraphQL, because now in the front end, you could just ask for the properties that you need. And then when the data comes back, you'll get a JSON data with the information that you actually need as a front end developer. And why is there a problem for that? It's not a problem because, oh, uh, this can't be done properly without GraphQL is because there is back end guys that don't understand how the front end works and they'll send you a JSON file or a JSON data, whatever, in an array with like one object that has 2000 properties. And you're like, bro, all I needed was the title and the description in the image of the, the, the blog post or, or whatever it might be, or the listing. What I needed was the price. Some guy goes in and sends you, uh, an object that, <laughs> that is the size of the Empire State Building. You're like, yo, bro, you know what I'm saying? So now there's a problem because guys don't understand how to use the, the front end and, and the things that you might need. And there's no communication, right? But of course, that's in, in bad teams. That's in guys that, you know, they, they put their head down and they say, this is all I know how to do. And this is all I want to do. It's like, nah, stupid. If you're a web developer, if you're a software engineer, right? What you want to do is you want to have the understanding of everything, but be a master of one thing. Okay. You don't want to be a master of everything because then now you don't know anything. Okay. You want to be able to understand everything and master one thing. Perfect example. You want to become a front end developer. Learn about everything that has to do with web development, right? You don't have to be a master, but master the front end. Same thing for a back end guy. You want to be just a back end guy? Master the back end, but understand the ecosystem that's happening around you. Don't be a ass. I was about to say, <laughs> I don't want to curse, but don't be an a hole, right? <laughs> If you're like, oh, this is all I do. Let the front end guys deal with that. Like, nah, you don't want to be that guy. All right. So anyways, man, thank you for this uh question. A <laughs> little saff. Okay. Uh, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like this video. Let me know what you think. Okay. Uh, this was like an interesting uh comment to, to go over and to talk about. But yeah, man, like I said, man, you want to learn both of them. Now, one last thing before we leave is that. There's more job opportunities for a guy who knows the whole full stack. Okay. If you're thinking in your head, like, well, I just want to be a front end guy. You're basically cutting your opportunities in half. Okay. It's the same thing as a guy that only does back end. If you can only do back end, you have no understanding of the front end. You're cutting your opportunities in half. You're cutting yourself right down the middle. You're saying, Hey, I'm only going to be from here and up. And if you're a back-end guy, you're going from there and down. You know what I mean? <laughs>
Anyways, man, I'm out of here. This, this is starting to get crazy. See you guys later.